Do you ever chop these up after? No, never chop them up after, Jackie. I always let them out totally unedited. So if you swear, it's there for posterity. Cool. <laughs> that reminds me manners. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name's Sarah Arrow, and today I'm chatting with a fabulous client of mine, the lovely Jackie Malpass. She's over in Spain, and she's about to release to an unsuspecting public a life-changing product. And... As we were talking on our call, I said to her, do you know what, Jackie, this would be absolutely fantastic in a Hangout. Why don't we just jump onto Google Hangout and start talking? And she said, yeah, sure. So here we are, the two of us, no makeup, half a bar of chocolate and a cup of tea and fired up, ready to share with you this fantastic product. Now, before you tell everybody, Jackie, what it is you're going to unleash upon the world, can you tell us a bit about you for people that don't know you? Sure. So my my background is sales, marketing and IT. So that's how I've ended up being a creative person, but also a bit of a geek and a bit of a control freak when it comes to uh, doing things like the program I'm just about to tell you about. But it's also it's given me a great understanding about why people want or need to write books. So I, oh gosh, I started writing books a long, long, long time ago. I think the internet was still virginal. Um, I remember creating my first website and producing a book that was called Marketing for Small Businesses. And you could buy it off my website as a PDF. And, oh, I think the next book I wrote was, um, oh my goodness, oh I know, it was about uh, natural fertility planning. Do not ask me how I got into that. I think I was working with an IT company at the time and... Um, the guy who ran it said that we could all, you know, run our own businesses and stuff like that. So I fell into fertility. I have no children. I have no idea. But I fell into fertility, so I wrote a book about it. So, you know, I, I've been a writer for years and years and years while I still was doing, you know, sales and marketing and consulting. Um, oh, a couple of years ago, I trained to be an executive coach. And I also did my NLP, NLP get to my teeth in, practitioner. Mm -hmm. And all of that stuff has enabled me to, to be able to bring kind of like a business perspective, a coaching perspective, you know, a technical, a practical, creative, and a, and a kind of a process thing into everything I do. So today, and what I've been doing probably since about 2005, is really helping people connect to their personal brand through writing. But also, in terms of helping people to connect to their brand, lots of people get really kind of stuck about who they are and where they're going in life. And a lot of healing kind of stuff comes out. So the, the writing the book or the practical creative and the business and whatever, it's, it, it becomes life-changing. So that not only do they get connected to their personal brand, they write a book, they change their life, they heal themselves. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. So I find myself today in the enviable position. If I could show you outside, I'm sitting at the top of a mountain. Not literally, I'm in my house. But I look out on a, on a mountain. And today what I'm doing is I'm, you know, I'm ghostwriting for people. I do um, write a few people's blogs, but mostly it's around writing books. I coach people to, to write all kinds of books, whether they're um, deeply, they might be spiritual, they might be very practical business books about accountancy, they might be books about lean, there's all kinds of stuff, but I have this, I, I can't even call it a job, I can't even call it a job because I love it, so I spend my time helping people to write their books, writing for them, and then writing my own stuff, in between, oh. walking my dogs in the Rambler, it's, it's fab. So you're living the dream in Spain and yeah. doing what fulfilling your purpose exactly what you were meant to do I, I, so, I, I totally believe that sorry yeah totally yeah, believe that yeah my f big question is now if somebody has said to me a million years ago you would never that I would write a book and I would write blogging and do all sorts of writing I would have just laughed at them now there are plenty of people like I was back then who think to themselves how on earth can I write a book? So if somebody's just starting out online, they've not quite got into the whole blogging thing, not quite got into putting themselves out there to grow their business, what's your advice to those? I think the first thing that I would say is, is for people to get really connected to what they're passionate about, what their purpose is. 
to really think about where they are today. One of the things I used to hate when I was in the, the, the corporate world, you know, is we all had titles, you know, I was a marketing manager or I was a something account manager or whatever it was. And it kind of puts you in a box and it says, you know, you need to be doing these, these, you know, all of this, these list of things. And I would say to people, look at the stuff that you absolutely adore doing. Don't give it a title. Think of what it is. And then think about how you can build, a, you know, your, your business and your brand around it. So think about where you are today. Don't think about whether you can or can't write a book because you, you can. There's so many ways you can write a book. You don't even have to write it to write it, if that makes any sense. But from where you're standing here today, kind of put yourself forward in a year's time and say, what's my vision for 12 months down the line? Because let's face it, if you're going to write a book, some people might do it in three, some might do it in six, some might take an, a year to do it. But it's thinking about where you want your business to be in 12 months' time, doing the stuff you absolutely love, and kind of have that vision of as if it were already true. Mm -hmm. And when you've got that focus and you know where it is that you want to be, then it's about what is the right book. So the right book is, is really going to be that vision. It's going to be your business strategy, your reader, and then that big pile of content that you've got. Now, that big pile of content could be stuff in here. Um, I, in, I used to teach knowledge management, and what we say is you've got tacit and explicit knowledge. And tacit is the stuff, excuse my tongue, that you can lick. So, you know, you'll have piles and piles and piles and piles of stuff that you can lick i.e. stuff you can repurpose and then all you've got to do is get the stuff that's in your head out so it's it's vision and thinking about who are those people that you would adore to work with building a business strategy around it and getting the content together but don't panic because you can write a book it's all about chunking it down and making it simple now for some people writing is like pulling their teeth out they'll never do it but there's just there's loads of ways you can write you don't even have to put your pen to paper loads of ways mm -hmm. and it tends to be fingers to keyboard now and if oh. I had to write a book where I had to put pen to paper mm. beyond my name and the book title nothing could get <laughs> and if typing isn't your thing there's nothing to stop you using things like dragon naturally yeah. speaking and other things and talking your book Absolutely. so there's plenty of ways you don't have to as you say write now as an entrepreneur and as a female one mm. I frequently worry and I know it's a futile worry that mm. my story isn't interesting enough in order to be able to make into a book and to sell what do you do in those set of circumstances Jackie now that is that is a fantastic question because I get asked that all the time. I'm running a retreat next week, so I've had conversations with all the people that are coming, and for the better part, nobody really knows what is the book that they're going to write. And when you start talking to people and you say, you know, it's it, for me, it's about I listen to what what you're telling me. So I'm, I'll ask, I just ask you a couple of questions. And it's about getting really connected to the stuff, well, like we've said already, the stuff that you're really passionate about. And when you and when you start telling me about what really kind of floats your boat and fires you up, the stuff that people say, the way that their you know their voice and their, their and their their face changes, you can start to see that they're onto something. All of a sudden, it's like, actually, I've got something that's unique because. You and I may write blogs, but you have a different style. You have a different way of doing it. You have lived a different life. You're going to live a different life. You've had different experiences. You've been on different training programs. You have different thought processes. And all of that stuff makes what you're going to write uniquely different. So you, mm. you know, if, for example, I, I went onto Amazon and looked at books on personal branding, for example, there's trillions. And I have bought quite – one of the things I do is I will um, – research my, you know, if I'm writing a, a, a particular book for either myself or someone else, I'll do a load of research. And what is fascinating is, yeah, you can pick up things like structure and style from somebody else, but every single person's book is different. So it might be personal branding or it might be, I don't know, marketing in the new age. But what you have to say because of the way that your life has gone and the way that you run your business and the way that you think and you process things and you communicate 
it's all going to be different. So, do you know, I would forget about, I've got nothing to say. I bet you've got, I was going to swear, lots <laughs> to say. <laughs> And that's something that I actually say to my blogging clients, that when you're mm. in the right niche, yeah. you never, ever run out of things to talk about. And, in fact, it's hard to shut you up and stop yeah. you publishing yeah. 20 times a day because you've got, oh, and another thing, and another thing, and another yeah. thing. Yeah. But when you actually find the thing that really connects you to your voice, then you just yeah. want to share it with everybody. Absolutely. I, I call it your inspirational message. It's when you, you know, I guess it depends on your your belief system of, of, of why we're here on the planet Earth. But let, let's imagine, you know, that you're up in the soul place and you're thinking, oh, I'm off to Earth and, and what am I going to do? And oh, I'll learn these lessons and I'll do this, whatever. And, and all of a sudden you're in the amniotic fluid and you forget what you've come to do. And while you were up in the soul place, you know, you had you had a sole purpose, a reason for being, a reason for coming here and it's getting connected to what that is and what that inspirational message was all those eons ago when you were, I don't know, floating around wherever it was, that's what you've come here to share so it's going to be, it's going to be amazing, it's going to be great. Right, so as well as your experiences and a book to grow your business, are there other kinds of books that you can write? Well, of course. I mean, if I take, for example, um, I wrote a healing memoir. So I've kind of gone through a process. So the first book I wrote was about writing to heal. So you use journaling and kind of different um, kind of coaching NLP kind of um, techniques to change your mindset. And while I was going through some pretty awful times, I, I journaled pretty much every night and every day I wrote some pretty crap poetry and prose and some some fairly funny stories where I murdered a lot of people and I came across this idea that you could do creative life writing so you could take a life experience and turn it into a novel if you wanted to or you could take a creative life experience and turn it into a how-to book or you could take a life experience write it as I did as, as a kind of healing memoir, I don't really care if anyone ever buys it, I did it for me, or you can write it so that it's part story and part how-to. So there's, there's, you know, there's masses of different kinds of books that you can write. Just, It's just kind of tap, tapping into you and saying, well, what do I want to get out of this? So do I want to write it to heal and not share? Do I want to write it and share? Do I want to write it and keep make it as a how-to? You know, it's it's really down to your imagination and, and what you want the book to do for you. What's the purpose of your book? Mm -hmm. Okay, that leads me into a publishing thing now. Are you ready for the publishing question? Oh, go for it. Do you have to have a publisher or can you self-publish? And is there a stigma to self-publishing compared to having a publisher? And should you decide to self-publish, will that prevent you from getting a publisher later on? I realise that's probably <laughs> that's like six question million questions. Like okay. so, <laughs> but I wanted to give you plenty to get your teeth into. Okay, so I'm going to start with the control freak in me that says, if you want to do something that makes you feel really good, i.e. publish a book, why would you go through the trials and tribulations of trying to find a traditional publisher and getting lots of people kicking sand in your face? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, if you're going to write a book which is about branding and your book, uh, not you're going to write a book about branding, but it's about branding you, and your book is about helping you to build your business, then it's a marketing tool. So if you've got a marketing tool like a brochure, you write the copy, you give it to the printer, the printer prints it, you wouldn't go and find a publisher for a brochure. So if you if you kind of change your mindset and think of it as a marketing tool, then self-publishing is a great way to go. If you are thinking around the, oh my God, you know, I'll never get a publishing contract, that's a load of rubbish. These days, lots and lots of people self-publish first. Um, I think I was doing some research on Robin Sharma's books, the guy who wrote the monk, all the monk things, and he had to self-publish his own book. And then obviously eventually he finds a publisher and the, the rest is history. And that's true for a lot of people. So I think the first thing is we want to celebrate success. 
So I would highly recommend that you self-publish because there's, I, I personally don't believe there's any stigma in it. If you self-publish, it's really important that you make sure your book looks beautiful so that you do hire a professional cover designer, you do make sure the inside looks good and all that kind of thing. So presupposing you've done all of that, fine. There's, there's, so there's the self-publishing that you do yourself. So you're using you know, places like CreateSpace and Kindle Direct Publishing. Then there's kind of like a, um, a hybrid, which is where you would go to, um, let me have a think. So if you took some, someone like Hay House, who's a traditional publisher, they have a spin-off, which is called Balboa Press. I think I've got that right. And I'm not telling you the shipping port in Spain. <laughs> And um, what they do is they take your manuscript and they are, they are simply a publisher. But part of their marketing speak says by you know, spending $7,000 with us to publish your book, blah, 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 you know, we take you through the process, you have a chance of Hay House finding it. So if you're desperate, then that's a, a route to go. Um, and then you could put yourself a book proposal together and go and research all of the agents in your genre and go through that process of sending off cover letters. Do not send your book because you know they people do. They just pile up outside the publisher's door and they probably end up binning them. Um, it's to, to find a traditional publisher these days. I don't know. It's it, it. I know it's hard work, but for some people, I talked to someone recently whose name I won't mention and. Um, she was really jammy and she was sitting next to someone from Hay House at a lunch and the rest is history. So so really, you know, if it, for us, the man in the street, I would, I would always go self-publishing route. If you have a dream to find a traditional publisher, still do that first book while you're looking to find somebody to, to publish you. But it's, it's honestly, it, it is hard work. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I think if you self-publish, it may how can I put it? It may satisfy you, but then again, it may fire up the desire to get published yeah. properly. Yeah. And yeah. you know what the situation's like. You know what it's like to work with someone who's editing your book. You know what it's like to work with a designer. And even if your book is picked up by a traditional publisher you've still got to go ahead and market it and you've got all of that experience Absolutely. you know the days of publishers going out mm. and marketing your book when they've got mm -hmm. tremendous overheads it's not going to happen how it yeah. used to happen yeah. so that's, that's a really good point Sarah and I, and I say to everybody you know at the beginning of any book journey it's it's remembering that if you want that traditional publisher you know I'm, I'm working with someone at the moment and he would love to have a traditional publisher and I've said um, you've got to build your personal brand, you've got to know what that message is, and you've got to build your platform. If you build your platform and you've done all of those things and you've written an amazing book, then we can go and find a publisher because they they want they want good content, but they want to be able to market it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're gonna to have to do all of that hard work. So pff, And you if you've got an audience already, yeah, then exactly. And that reminds me, um, my brother-in-law, he's a school teacher. He's a great guy. He actually does various other things in addition to teaching. He's like a super teacher. And he was asked to write a how-to book with somebody else for teachers. So he gets a pound per copy for the book. Mm -hmm. And it took him three months to write with the other guy. And he's made, I think it's 150 quid. Oh, and he's got to give it to the half of that goes to the other guy who's co-authored with him. Yeah. And I said, "How much is the book selling for?" And he said, "Nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Why don't you get it?" I said, "Well, why don't I give you a tenner and you give me the PDF and I'll send it to my Kindle?" You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he said, "Oh, how did your book do?" I said, "Oh, yeah, great. My book, I've sold five hundred copies." And he says, "Well, how much do you get per copy?" I said, "I get seventy percent, and Amazon take thirty. And he said, and how much is your book going for? I said, not as much as yours, yet I'm still earning more than you. Mm -hmm. And that's the other plus side that people don't realise mm -hmm. with self-publishing is mm -hmm. by the time the publisher's taken their chunk out of it, you don't actually have a lot left. 
you will never, well, I, I'll take the word never out. It is a rare author that makes money from their books alone. Your book, I keep stressing, it, your book is a marketing tool. So, you know, if you publish on CreateSpace as a print on demand, you might get 20p a book. You know, if you do it with Kindle, like you're, you know, you you you've done, you'll get your seventy percent. If you have that opportunity to go to speaking events, I would go and find a publisher. I use a a, a publishing company in Swansea, and he he prints a lot of books for publishing houses, and gives solo authors the same prices. So you could get your book printed for about a pound thirty, and sell it for a fiver at, at a conference. And if my brother-in-law did that, he would get still more than traditional yeah. publishing. Wow. Well, exactly. I mean, the thing is, if you've got an agent, think about this. So think about when any product is manufactured, the process it goes through. So if I if I make something, I then so I've gone through all of that, that prototyping and testing and whatever stage, and all that's costing me money. You know, writing a book, if you actually, if you sat down and said, how much do I earn an hour, right? And how many hours it takes to write a book? I did a calculation. It's about 700 hours to write and publish a book. So if you earn 10 quid an hour, you can work that out. If you earn 75, what we're we looking at, 50 odd grand, it's cost you to write a book, right? So I mean, that's the scary thing. So it's getting that out of that mindset that you're gonna you're gonna make money out of the book alone. The book is just a sprat to catch a mackerel, and you'll make loads of money doing all kinds of other things so you know at the end of the day don't see it as a money-making vehicle although you know you may be really really lucky and you may be a rare author that does and you know I hope that that, that you do but it's looking you know say well, how else will I make money from 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 my book hmm. and, so and what else can we actually use the book to leverage for us you could do lots of things so you could, for example, you could use it to for your workshops. So the fact that you have thought about where you want to be in a year's time and you're thinking about the kind of things that you want to be teaching or coaching people or whatever it is that you do, that your book becomes a tool to give away on your workshops. I mean, how nice to go to a workshop instead of being given a bloody lever arch file with all those bits, you're given a lovely book to use. So that's one thing that you could do. You can use it as a marketing tool. So let's say you're looking to attract clients into your business. So let's say you are an accountant. Um, you might write your first, I'm going to get an accountant to write lots of books now. So you might write your first book on setting up in business. Then you might be growing business. Then you might be looking at succession planning. Can't think what else you might do, but there's, you know, so you've got a series of books that actually are about demonstrating your expertise and drawing people in. You could use your book to get speaking opportunities and then sell your book off the stage. And my favorite is to use your book as part of an online program. So, you know, if you put all of those things together, you've got some face to face stuff. So, you've got your coaching face to face. You use it as a marketing tool. You've got it to fill your workshops. You um, are getting speaking opportunities and selling it off the stage. And then your residual income comes from an online program that you have created around the content of your book. And there's probably a million and one other things you can do as well, but that's just for starters. And that just sounds phenomenal to have a book that yeah. attracts work to you, that you can be selective in having your workshop and work Absolutely. with the people that you want to. Yeah. They can go home with the goodie bag with your book in it. And let's face it, I know lots of people are like me. They never throw books away. Yeah. They may yeah. throw the ring binder away and all of the contents, yeah. but throw a book away. <sighs> no. Sacrilege, sacrilege, baby. Yeah, sacrilege, oh. no. Books are forever. Yeah. And then that person in time comes back to you and goes into a coaching program on line or even face to face so a book is a tool that just keeps on giving and giving and giving and giving wow. and, and the beautiful thing about self-publishing is now let's say you've gone down um, a route where you've gone with an agent who may then own the copy the copyright to your book or you've gone down a kind of a hybrid publishing route where they've taken your manuscript and they, they manage everything and you end up with just some royalties. But imagine the beauty that 
something changes in your industry and you just want to change your book, see, fingers to keyboard, you just make a few tweaks, oh, and look, in 24 hours you've got your freshly squeezed content ready to go out. So you're not in that situation where your stuff is getting old and stale, new stuff all the time, you know, just you can just upload it in what half an hour yeah and then 24 hours later it's available to be sold and I think that is so you know it puts the control in your hands so if you're mm. control freak that's kind of cool but it puts the, the control in your hands and it gives you the ability to just keep on having fresh beautiful books you can change the cover I often change the cover of books <laughs> I have a bit of a problem there but you know me aside, we could. Um, so you can change the cover, the content. You know, you could add new case studies, new legislation, all sorts of stuff. That is, I just think that's an amazing way to stay on top of what you do. And that's a really good thing there that you've mentioned about staying on top. And you can actually change the cover. So say you're in medical health, yeah, mm. and you've got a book about hygiene, and there's all of this Ebola scare, and everyone's mm going, I'm going to swear now, batshit crazy, because that's the only type of crazy you can go around, things uh, like Ebola. And yeah. people are going absolutely nutty, so what do you do? You rebrand your hygiene book and tailor it towards the okay. Ebola market. Yeah. Probably take you a day to rebrand it and put yeah. it all in there, and then you just back upload it to Amazon and get it out there and capitalise on Absolutely. something that people are looking and you're positioning yourself because Amazon is tremendous at getting top slots mm. in the search engines so if you do well with your book Amazon will pay to advertise it mm. but if you don't do well and you're just getting out there it will actually naturally get on the front page organically mm. So you can use your book to leverage really hard search terms in order to be found. Yeah. So it's it's something that you've got control of that you can leverage what's going on in the world to make you know Absolutely. more money and more awareness of what you do. Yeah. Why would you want to hand that to an agent and a a, a traditional publisher? I, I I, I get I get why people do because you know if you've if you've got something if you I, I guess it comes down to the kind of person you are um, and if you've got something that you've always dreamed of being a traditionally published author then I guess you know you would go that route but you know I I personally I just can't see the I can't see the point I can't see the point of giving the control to someone else and taking that flexibility away from me and someone else telling me what I've got to do. You know, we have the knowledge, the skills, the experience to put into the book. All we have to do is work with a team of people, people who can proofread, maybe copy edit. You might want to get a ghostwriter, your cover designer. The stuff that you want to say is inside you. You just have this team around you who make it the best book ever and you can just keep upgrading it and changing it and like you say, you know, altering it for mar different markets, all sorts of things. I just think it is, I just think it is one of the most beautiful, amazing ways to build your business and brand yourself, but also to change your life, to heal, to change, to whatever. I just, I think they're amazing. I mean, I, I'm probably like you. I consume books by the dozen. Mm. I've always got loads of books on the go. Always got a novel. Always got a, a nonfiction. Always chopping and changing, reading lots of different stuff. I love books. It's just you know, it's it's just a, a way of of helping humans to connect to each other. Mm -hmm. Right. One more question before I have to let you go, Jackie. Okay. Um, there are people that say everybody's got a story inside them, and some of them shouldn't be told. How do you <laughs> feel about that? Right. Well, I do think everyone's got a story. Um, I think what is fascinating is that a lot of people think that their story isn't interesting enough to be told when actually it is. Um, I think it's about people really need to get connected to the right book for the right reasons and then it is a book that should be published and there probably are lots of books that shouldn't be published but I'm gonna stay strong about that but I, I, I 
I would I would love to inspire everybody in some way to write whether they publish or not because I think they'll find it life-changing and I think when they start writing and they get connected to what it is they're saying they will actually discover that they have got the right book to write and people will want to read it Brilliant. Now, if somebody's watching this video and they're thinking to themselves, okay, I want to write this book, how can you help them, Jackie? Okay, so there are a number of ways. One of the ways is the Academy for Authors, which is an online program. So basically, you come online, you sign up, and then there are, it's a program divided into courses. So I've deliberately kept, kind of chunked things down so that you do. You, know, you do the, the personal branding bit, you do the planning, then the writing, then the editing, the publishing, and then the marketing. So you're doing everything in kind of bite-sized pieces and also because you use your brain in different ways for each of those things. So you've got the online program and we get to do Google Hangouts um, and stuff like that. There's lots of worksheets and various other resources for, for people to use. So that's one way. The, the next way is people can just um, have what I call ad hoc coaching so they might want to do a, a couple of hours where we look at their book or they might be in the middle of a book and they just w want to talk about a specific aspect or there is you know you can buy a set of coaching um, hours I have a, a, a complete package called from idea to publication and I'll do pretty much whatever it takes to get a book published in that so I've seen me write people's chapters I've seen me hooking up my video camera and videoing people. I, I, it's, it's whatever it takes because everybody's different and everyone gets stuck in different ways. So it's pointless me sitting here going, hmm, what does a successful book look like? It's like just dump, you know, dive in. And, and that's how you work. It's like dive in, let's get it done. So, so there's that kind of package as well. Um, and often you know people will ask me a question on Facebook or Google Plus or whatever and I'm quite happy to just answer um, ad hoc questions as long as you don't take all my time off me <laughs> but yeah so it's so it's um, online program and coaching I run retreats in Spain three times a year and the other thing that I'm thinking of doing I'm just being joined by my little dog hopefully yeah, she's not going to bark special guest <laughs> we have Marley Moo um, <laughs> Something that I am thinking of doing is if somebody wanted to come and take a week out of their of their, their business, their life, and they wanted to um, hook up, there's a bed and breakfast that I use for my retreat, stay in the bed and breakfast, we could work together for a week and you know you could pretty much get most of your book done, at least a first draft in that week, because I have this big whip. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, loads of ways. In a week. If, if you think about it, in a week you could, if you, so normally what I do, anyone who has coaching has homework before they come, so it's looking at competitors and readers and thinking about business strategy and vision, and I've got some other techniques that get them really thinking about what that book would be about. We can get it outlined. It's all about chunking and process, so you go through the process of getting it outlined, and then you know we can outline each chapter, get the right chapter framework, all about chunking, getting it into a pattern. And then it's getting somebody to write a little bit of most of that and having that feedback each day to say, well, I've done this. What do I do next? You could get a lot done wow. as long as you don't sit and drink and, you know, <laughs> on the partying. Well, that is the trouble with being in Spain, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Too much carpa, yes. Too much fiocca, yes. Yeah. Okay. Underneath the video will be links to Jackie's Academy for Authors and where you can find Jackie on social media. As you can see, she's very friendly and approachable, so if you've got any questions surrounding writing your book, please do get in touch with her or ask a question under the video and we'll check back and come and reply to you. Thank you so much for your time, Jackie. Thank you. It's been fab. Thank you. And that's it, folks. I will probably do another live video with somebody about something <laughs> in about six months when I've got older, got over this cold. And um, as you can hear, I'm very chesty. And um, I look forward to seeing you then. Take care now. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.